Hey there, Blockhead Traders. Here at Blockhead Traders, I must inform you that we are not financial professionals. Nothing we say should be considered financial advice. We offer our own thoughts and opinions to you, the viewer. We expect you to take these opinions, form your own financial conclusions, and make your own financial decisions. Today is Saturday, May 11th, 2024, and this is Blockhead Traders Weekly. In this week's episode, it's just myself, Sprocket888, and I have been busy this week playing several different earnings, and I'd like to take this episode to go through the different earnings plays, show you how they panned out. Some of them are still in flight uh, under management, and some of them were able to be closed out for full winners. So we'll take you through those in this week's episode. That's Starbucks, Beyond, Lyft, and Dropbox. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to our Discord, link in the description below. You can hop in there, talk to myself, Viper, some of the other blockhead traders. Love to hear what you're trading, love to hear what type of content you want to hear about. Also, you can find a link to thetagang.com forward slash sprocket888, where I post each and every one of my equity trades, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Last, this is available in an audio-only format. Just look up wherever you get your podcasts, and if you can't find it there, let us know and we will get it there. But let's move to this week's episode content about earnings. Now, just a little update on earnings. Earnings are one of my absolute favorite things to trade. And the way that I trade them is selling volatility. And so what I do is I have a screener. You can look back in past episodes where I have gone through this screener, but I'm looking for volatility. I'm looking for very, very, very high extended volatility. So I typically work, look at the historical volatility metric, and I'm looking for a historical volatility in excess of usually 50%. Uh, for all of these trades that I took in these earnings, there are four of them. I believe in all cases, the volatility was over 90%. And what the reason I do that is... Um, the higher the volatility, the wider the range that could be expected from uh, the earnings announcement. And that's not to say that I do that because I want to play long or short and I'm looking for a big price movement. On the contrary, I'm actually selling options. And so I am hoping and planning that the volatility is overstated and that the range of movement is actually less than the expected move. And the reason I do that is because the wider the expected move, the higher the options premium. And if you, just to remind everybody, the option premium, think of it like insurance. And so the more likely that something is to swing really wildly, the more expensive that insurance is. And my play is to sell that volatility. I am selling that insurance policy. So I am looking for doom and gloom and high volatile situations to sell into that to collect a large amount of premium. And I am banking on the fact that that, pre that volatility is overstated and the actual movement of the underlying will be less than the expected move. Because once the earnings are out, it's a binary event. Um, and as we have said many times, binary events typically accelerate price action. Um, they are an instantaneous move in price. And so you will see very, very violent swings uh, in earnings. So you might have uh, a $20 stock swinging 4 5 $6 up and down uh, before it kind of starts to settle out. So if you think of it like volatility is just this pent-up energy uh, in the stock, like a, a tense rubber band, um, the letting go or the announcement of the earnings lets all of that energy out and you get a, uh, you know, a big price movements, but eventually it kind of goes back to a mean reversion. And that's really the premise of these earnings trades. It is absolutely my favorite type of trade to play um, because I really like to sell volatility. It's kind of a, an income-based type strategy. And as you'll see in the earnings that we are going to go through, um, a lot of times you end up with inside that expected move. And once that's over, the amount of volatility just absolutely collapses out of that underlying. There's almost no volatility left. Um, and the, the options that you sold are nearly worthless. So you can actually buy them back um, for pennies or for you know small amounts of money and you get to pocket that difference. Uh, because what happens is when you sell the option, you collect that premium up front and then um, you basically hold on to it. When you go to close it out, you're buying those options back. Um, you'll see you can also let them expire. 
Uh, typically, I don't do this, but you'll see in one of the trades today, I did let the option expire worthless. Um, in that case, you don't actually pay the commissions to close it out. Um, I usually don't do that, but in this particular trade that I'll go through, uh, the options expiration was the very next day. Uh, so a lot of times when I'm playing earnings, I will start the earnings trade with the options expiration that expire the week of earnings because uh, that's going to have the highest volatility. You can sell options in, in subsequent weeks of expiration, um, but you'll find that that volatility is less. And when you go for the volatility contraction after the earnings announcement, it will be the biggest contraction the week of earnings uh, and then a slightly less contraction the next week and less the next and less the next. So I do that because I want to get that maximum volatility contraction. Now, if I am wrong on earnings and we end up swinging outside that expected move, that's where I will take and roll that position forward um, to the next monthly expiration. And then I'll get into a monthly cycle. Um, and we'll talk about that in one of the uh, trades that I will bring up this week. So the first trade that I want to bring up here is Starbucks earnings. Now, Starbucks earnings were actually on April 30th. So um, I entered this. This I actually talked about this, potentially joining this uh, earnings trade in a previous episode. I ended up taking this earnings trade. So I waited until the day of earnings. They were in an after-the-bell announcement. So on April 30th. I entered, I went out uh, in typical fashion for the about 16 to 20 delta strikes. I believe these are about 17 delta if I remember correctly. Uh, and that was an $83 put and a $95 call. Um, I was looking for Starbucks to trade uh, within those two price points after the earnings announcement. Um, I sold that strangle because I sold a put and I sold a call that is called a strangle. I sold two of those uh, at $1.48 a piece. So I collected $296 from that trade. Uh, the earnings announcement came out and Starbucks got absolutely walloped. Um, it fell well below that $83 strike. I believe the price ended up going down as low as $71 or $70. Um, that means I am in the money. And so I have basically risk of exposure of assignment. And going into selling these options, assignment is always a possibility that could happen. And you have to be prepared and you have to be okay with assignment. In this case, I was okay with Starbucks assignment on the put side, uh, actually even on the call side because I just don't, I didn't think it was going to extend uh, very long above that $95 strike. Uh, anyway, even if it went on the low side, um, I would be okay to purchase these at $83. I, I happen to believe that the Starbucks long-term um, is going to improve. They have just been absolutely hammered lately um, through different announcements, earnings, and I'm okay to own the stock. Uh, however, you know, that's not usually my goal. So um, I have not been assigned yet. Uh, but after earnings, on um, I waited a couple of days. These were going to expire on May 3rd. May 3rd was the Friday expiration of that particular earnings week. And because we had breached the strike and I was in the money, uh, I let the call options expire worthless uh, because they were way, way, way above. Um, and I went ahead and I rolled the put. So what that means is I wait as long as I can. Uh, typically, the week of expiration, I'm going to do it the Thursday before, maybe the Wednesday before. In this case, I actually waited until Thursday. And I closed out. I bought back um, the two puts that I had at $83. And then I sold them again um, with an expiration for May monthly expiration. So May monthly was May 17th. And so I currently have two puts in Starbucks at $83 strike prices that expire on May 17th. Um, Starbucks has been slowly recovering. It's currently trading at $76. I am still in the money. Um, so very likely I will be rolling this before the 17th. And what happens is once I get into that roll cycle, I go month to month to month. Um, so next week is the May monthly expiration. Uh, and what I will do is as we come towards Friday, if we do not get out of the money, I will go ahead and close out that May expiration put and I will roll it forward into June monthly expiration, which will be the third Friday in June. I will definitely collect more premium for that and I will just keep that rinse and repeat cycle going until we can get back above 
um, that particular strike price and I can close out for out of the money, uh, or I will get assigned. Um, and if I get assigned, I will go ahead and start selling calls against that position and enter what's known as the wheel. So after Starbucks, the next trade that I took on earnings was beyond. And beyond um, was again, a very, very volatile uh, nump play. And I went in looking at, again, that 16 to, to 20 delta strangle. I believe this was closer to an 18 delta when I put it on. Um, their earnings were on May 6th after the bell. Again, I entered the day of earnings. Uh, typically, I try to enter either just before close or early in the morning. That's when the volatility is the largest. Um, and I went with an 18 put and a 31 call. And I collected 88 cents on each of these, and I sold three of these, um, which was within my position sizing uh, requirements or position sizing limits that I have for my portfolio. The earnings, again, were not super great, and the price fell through the put side. Uh, so here I went ahead and let the calls expire absolutely worthless because there was no way we were breaching that 31 call uh, as this thing dropped down. Um, I don't remember how low it got, maybe 15 or so, but uh, as of this recording on Friday's close, uh, it was 16.85. And I didn't hold this for as deep into the week. Um, like I said, I really look um, within that week and sometimes I'll go closer to Thursday, Friday, that type of thing. Um, this was pretty deep into the money and I really wanted to get a roll off to take me down to a monthly uh, to give it a chance to kind of do a little bit of a mean reversion. So I went ahead and I rolled this the day after earnings. And um, on that day, I was able to push it out to the monthly, which was May 17th. So just an extra week or two. Uh, before I will kind of cycle to the June expiration if we don't hit it. I rolled that for 20 cents after buying back the 18 put that expired the week of earnings and then selling the May 17th expiration of that 18 put. So I collected another uh, $60. Now, the this was not as deep in the money as the Starbucks trade. Um, so like I said, currently at $16.85, uh, it was an 18 strike. So only consuming about $3,000 of buying power and if you divide out that $324 that I've collected so far, we're looking at around 11% return on capital. This is a lot closer to what I like to see. Now, I would have liked to close this out. It's still open. Um, and the where the price is, I very likely will be rolling this to the June expiration. Um, that's okay because I'm not super deep into the money. And so the amount of premium that should be there for the roll will be pretty decent. And I'll just go ahead and, like I mentioned before, rinse and repeat. Uh, sell more premium, and I'll just keep doing that uh, until I get out of the money. Uh, or if I get assigned, then I'll hold this and I'll start selling calls against it. Now, moving to the next earnings trade that I went into, and this is where we start getting much closer to the ideal situation of earnings trades. Um, so Lyft is the next one that I got into. Um, so Lyft had earnings on May 7th. I entered this again May 7th. It was an after the bell earnings. Um, I went with a 14 and a half put and a 22 call. Um, this one, I actually believe was closer to the actual 16 Delta. So I was pretty conservative with this one. Um, in hindsight, I probably could have tightened it up uh, and collected quite a bit more because this thing really didn't move after earnings. Um, it had a big uh, spike up and down and, and kind of bent, bent um, but really it settled out uh, right where it was before the earnings announcement. Uh, so I actually sold eight of these contracts. The strangle that I sold was 69 cents each. Uh, that allowed me to collect $552 in premium. Um, the volatility completely collapsed. And the very next day, I was able to buy that exact same strikes uh, for four cents a piece. And that really just shows you the volatility contraction that goes like that. Um, so the day before, those things were going for $0.69 cents each. Remember, they represent 100 contracts, so that's actually $69 a contract. Um, and then the very next day, the cost of those same strikes was $4 or $0.04. Cents. And, and that is, that's that example of that volatility contraction. I sell it at that $0.69, cents, and then I look to close it out the very next day. I didn't want to risk it for any sort of price movement uh, that might come in. I had booked almost 100% profit right there. Um, so day after earnings, buy it back, $32, close it out, collected a total there of $520. Um, the actual buying power impact of this uh, was about $4,000 based on the position sizing. 
And that's this is exactly the ideal case of earnings. So overnight, I got a 13% move, a 13% return on my capital, um, got that buying power back, and then looking to deploy it in another set of earnings. So moving on to my last earnings trade in Dropbox. This is the one that's a little bit of an exception uh, to my rule of just closing out the day after earnings. Um, so you'll notice that I actually allowed these to expire worthless. This is a little different than what I did in Lyft. So let me hop back here to Lyft because in Lyft, this was going to expire on May 10th. And so I could have not closed these out on May 8th and let Lyft ride for two more days. There is a high probability that, that Lyft would have stayed between 14 and a half and 22 on the price of the underlying. However, you have to put this into a risk reward uh, perspective. And I had already had on the day of open there after earnings, a, a unrealized gain of $520. So if I closed it out, like I did, I was able to pocket and lock in that $500, $520 profit. So the flip side of that is if I wanted to leave this open for two more days and expire worthless, I could have increased my gain by $32. But what you're effectively doing at that point is I'm risking the $520 that I already have gained to earn an additional $32. And for me, that risk reward is not really palatable for, for my style of trading, for my personal preference on risk and reward. Maybe that's worth it to you. Um, if so, then you can try to let this ride out. But you don't really know what's going to happen to that price. And you could end up forfeiting some or all of that $520 while you're chasing the additional 32 And so that's why when I get such a big volatility contraction there of going from, you know, $0.69 cents to $0.04, cents, I close it out, put it in there, and then go on to the next play. It's not worth it to me to stay around for the extra, you know, bleed off of that four cents. And however, in Dropbox case, um, this was a May 10th expiration. The earnings were on May 9th. I entered on May 9th. So the day after earnings where you get all that volatility contraction, that was the expiration of the options. And so this one, again, I, I believe it was about an 18 delta when I entered it on May 9th. So I went with an 18 put and a 31 call. I sold 10 of these contracts at 44 cents a piece, collecting $440. Now, the day after earnings, I had almost a full uh, contraction there of volatility. I could have closed out. I think it was trading about six cents uh, for the same put and call strikes. However, um, there really wasn't a lot of volume. There really wasn't a lot of price movement. Um, it was kind of fizzling out. It's the Friday of the trading week. Um, and I decided uh, to s just let it ride out into closure, um, you know, putting it out there. So in this case, yes, I did technically risk that $440 for an additional um, $60, $60, so it wasn't really $440. I guess it would have been $380. Um, that I had when the market opened uh, because it would have cost me uh, $60 to close those 10 contracts. And so, yes, I did risk that $380 for an additional $60, but that was really because there was no additional days after that. And so I was pretty comfortable in this case of just letting this thing ride out um, as the price really wasn't moving. And sure enough, it expired absolutely worthless. It was $23.13 which is well above the 18 put and well below the 31 call. So I was able to net the complete 100% gain of that 44 cents that I sold. Uh, it took about a uh, buying power of about $3,000. So dividing that 440 by 3,000 returned me about a 15% return on capital for an overnight trade. And again, this is another example. This is closed out, but this is exactly the textbook earnings trade that I'm after. Just massive volatility contraction went from 44 cents to six cents the following day. Um, that also happened to be the day of expiration. So I let it expire worthless. So I went from 44 cents to nothing. Uh, and collected all of that whole 44 cents. Um, and then I'm just going to start looking for trades next week. So that brings us to the end of this week's episode. Kind of a deep dive there on all the earnings trades that I got into. 
Um, this is, you know, my favorite time, uh, our earnings season. It comes, you know, four times a year, uh, but it's kind of nice because it actually lasts like three to four weeks. You got different sectors uh, reporting different weeks. Usually it's kicked off with the banks uh, and then you kind of come into some tech stocks. Uh, then you get into your retail and it, it kind of varies. Next week is really where retail starts kicking off. I haven't gone through uh, to pick out what I might be looking for in retail earnings, uh, but my normal criteria I will be looking, I'm looking for very extended historical volatility, uh, typically anything above the 60% or greater historical volatility mark is something I'm going to consider for an earnings trade. Again, I'm looking for that binary event to bring a lot of volatility contraction, and I want to sell the high volatility, and then I want to buy back the low volatility uh, after the earnings announcement, and that difference of that contraction is what I get to pocket um, as my premium collected and go into my brokerage account for the next earnings trade. Maybe some of that style of trading excites you. Maybe you'll be looking. Uh, maybe you like to long the shares or short the shares going into earnings. Maybe you like to trade it after hours. Uh, whatever your particular style is, hopefully you're out there finding the trades that you like to trade uh, and you're meeting with much success out there in the market, uh, pocketing those little bits of premium. Remember that uh, you know the successful traders really control your risk mitigation. So always be cognizant of your risk tolerances uh, and your downside risk in any sort of trade. Good luck out there. And remember, think outside the block.